and welcome to Smart Interviews. Today we will solve a problem called House Robber from the platform LeetCode. You can find the problem link in the description below. I highly recommend you to pause the video over here, open the problem statement, read it, understand it thoroughly and see if you can come up with a solution of your own. Let's get started. So if you see the problem says that there is a thief who found a new place for thievery. There is only one entrance to this area called the root. Besides the root, each house has only one parent house. After the tour, the thief realized that all houses in this place form a binary tree. It will automatically contact the police if two directly linked houses were broken into on the same night. Given the root of the binary tree, we need to return the maximum amount of money the thief can rob without alerting the police. Now if you try to bring the problem statement out of the story, it's as simple as you are given a binary tree, you have to find the maximum sum of nodes such that no two chosen nodes are adjacent to each other, that is they are linked to each other. For instance, if you look at the first example, you can get the maximum sum by choosing 3, 3 and 1. Hence, the output is 7. If you look at the second example, you can get the maximum sum by choosing 4 and 5, giving you a sum of 9. If you look at just these two examples, the solution seems pretty straightforward because in the first example, you are taking all the nodes of the first level you are skipping everything in the second level and you are taking all the nodes of the third level. And in the second example, you are not taking level 1 and level 3, you are taking all the nodes of second level. That is, you are either choosing a level or you are not choosing a level. But is it this straightforward? Let's try to understand better with more examples. Say, this is the tree that you are dealing with and the nodes are marked as A, B, C and so on. Now if you decide to choose this node, you cannot take this, you cannot take this and you cannot take this. Similarly, if you decide to take F, you cannot take C, you cannot take J and you cannot take K, but you can take G as well. So if you see, you are taking the node B, you are taking the node F, you are taking the node G and you can also take node H and node I. So it's not as simple as alternating between the levels and either taking a level or not taking a level. It's not as simple as that. Let's try to break down the problem statement. For any node, say the node is A, there are only two options, right? Either you can take the node or you skip the node. Say the answer that you get by taking the node is X and say the answer that you get by not taking the node is Y. Of course, the answers X and Y will depend on the answer of the child nodes. So if the node has two child nodes, even for them, we'll have the answers as x1 and y1. That is, if we take this node, what is the sum that we can get for this subtree? And if we do not take this node, what is the sum that we can get for this subtree? We are calling that as x1 and y1. Similarly, we'll have x2 and y2. For every node, if we can find these x's and y's, will we be able to use that to find our answer? If you look at any tree, finally in the answer, we'll either have the root node or we will not have the root node. So if we can find the maximum sum, for both the possibilities, one with the root node, one without the root node, then one of these will give us the answer. 
there is no other possibility in the final answer either root will be present or it will not be present so for every node if we can compute this kind of a x and this kind of a y our job will be done let us focus on finding x once we do that we'll also try to see how we can find y x means x means we are taking the node so if we are taking the node if we are taking this we can definitely not take the child nodes that means we should use the values y1 and y2 y1 indicates the maximum sum of this subtree without having the current node similarly y2 indicates the maximum sum of this subtree without having this node y2 so for computing x can we simply say that the value of x will be roots value because we are taking the current node for sure plus y1 plus y2 that is the value of x let's try to deal with the value of y y means we are not taking the current node let us look at some examples for this example if this is the current node and if you are not taking it you will definitely take this and this that means you will consider x1 and x2 because you are taking the child nodes so one option for y is simply x1 plus x2 that is by taking both the child nodes if you look at the second example if we are not taking this node how do you think we'll find the maximum subtree sum of course condition to that that we are not taking two nodes which are adjacent to each other that's a condition we have to follow throughout our discussion so if you are not taking this we'll get the maximum sum with the help of 14 plus 5 plus 12 that means we are not taking this and we are taking this so the maximum sum that we are getting by not taking the node 3 is 14 plus 5 plus 12 which is 31 that means we are not taking the left child but we are taking the right child that means other possibility for finding this y is not taking left and taking right so not taking left and taking right so it is y1 plus x2 similarly if you look at the third example we have just shifted this subtree to the right part so in this we'll be taking again same thing 14 plus 5 plus 10 of course we are looking at computing y that means we are not taking the current node that means we are not taking this as well so this is a little opposite to the second example we are taking the left child but we are not taking the right child so this becomes another possibility we are taking the left child we are not taking the right child that means our sum is x1 plus y2 and if you look at the fourth example again we are still discussing about y discussion of x is done way back we are still discussing about the point where we do not take the current node now if you look at this we'll get the maximum sum by taking 15 plus 2 
plus 14 plus 5. That means we are skipping both of these nodes. So should we consider this possibility? That is, should we consider a possibility where we are not taking left child as well as we are not taking right child? That is the sum will be y1 plus y2. The question to you here is, should we even consider this possibility? Because if you are taking these, isn't it in our interest to take this as well to maximize the sum? That's what it looks like with the current example. However, however, if this tree was a subtree for this, now if we try to dive deep on this, for this entire tree, what will be the maximum possible sum? We should take this 20 along with 15, 2, 14 and 5. That will give us the maximum possible sum. That means there is a requirement to skip all of this and consider only these nodes. That means we should explore the option of not taking both left and right side. So hence our y can be computed using either x1 plus x2 or y1 plus x2 or x1 plus y2 or y1 plus y2. We will compute y using all these four possibilities. And since we are looking for maximum sum, we will obviously be taking max of all of these. So to summarize the logic, for every node, we are finding x and y. We are finding those x's and y's with the help of the values of x's and y's for the child nodes. For x, it is as simple as root dot value plus y1 plus y2. But for y, we have to explore all the four possibilities. Once we get this, even for the root node, once we get this information, in the final answer, the root node will be either a part of it or not a part of it. So once we find both x and y for the root node, our answer will be simply max of x comma y. That's the entire logic to solve this problem. Of course, this problem can also be solved in multiple different ways, but this is a simple and easy way of listing down all the use cases, understanding the logic thoroughly, and then we should try to convert this into code. Again, I recommend you guys to pause the video over here, get a deeper understanding of the logic, and try to convert this logic to code on your own. You can use any language of your choice. So as discussed, for every node, we need to compute two values, one by including the node, another one by excluding the node. In this function, it's returning only a single integer, but we have to get two values. So if we cannot use the same function, we'll write a separate helper function. So let us say we write a separate function called solve, where we pass the root node and it will give us two values, one by including and one by excluding. We'll accept the output into a pair of integers, say p. As per your language of choice, you can either use a tuple if you're using Python. If you're using Java, you can create a new Java class called pair, which will have two values inside it, say x and y. And once we get it for the root node, as discussed, we can simply return max of the value including the root as the sum and the value excluding the root as the sum. That's it for the current function. Now let us see how we can implement the helper solve function where we are doing the actual processing. The only input to the function is the root node. 
Now we discussed that for every node to compute x and y, we need the x and y for its chime nodes. So let's try to compute the x and y for the left child. And similarly, let's try to compute the x and y for the right child. We'll reuse the same function. We'll call the same function solve with root left. We'll call the same function solve with root right. It will give us the x and y's for the left subtree and the right subtree. Let us extract x1, y1 and x2, y2. x1 is nothing but left dot first. y1 is nothing but whatever we got from the left side dot second. We are storing first parameter as the sum including the node and second parameter as the sum excluding the node. We'll do the exact same thing for the right side. So x2 equal to the answer of right subtree dot first and y2 equal to the answer of right subtree dot second. Once we get this, let's try to compute the x and y for the current node. We discussed that current nodes x will be as simple as current nodes value plus we cannot take the child nodes so plus y1 plus y2 and for current nodes y value we discussed that first is x and second is y so don't get confused so the, for the current nodes y value there were four possibilities we'll take max of all four of them one possibility is if we are skipping the current node we take left and we take right both second possibility is we take left but we do not take right so x1 plus y2 third possibility is we do not take left so y1 plus we take right which is x2 and fourth possibility is we do not take any of them that is y1 plus y2 so this will give us the corresponding y for the current node and we can simply return this to the previous function call what did we miss it's a recursive code so we need a base condition the moment we encounter null it's an empty tree so including excluding both sum will be zero so we should return a pair with the values as zero and zero i hope you guys followed the logic and its code conversion let's try to run and see so if we run the code we see that there is a small compilation error we had a typo over here we'll just correct it quickly we can try to run the code again we see that it's working for the sample test cases we can submit and try. We see that it's working for all the hidden test cases as well. So through this video, I hope you understood that if for a problem, you figure out all the use cases, everything thoroughly on pen and paper, it becomes very easy to convert the logic to code. If you miss anything, you'll end up spending a lot of time in debugging which is kind of a waste of time if you're working actively on problem solving. So minimize your time on the system, maximize your time on pen and paper. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more such content.